Family, I want to welcome you again to the first, I use the word, the first episode of 2024. And um, I'm currently here live, uh, but you'll be watching it on a recorded place here in Makanda, formerly known as Grimstown. Um, I know for some of you, you'll be like, yeah, obviously, why would it be Makanda? Because I, you know, you know the story. Let's not go too far. I decided to fly all the way from West Africa, Nigeria, to be precise, to come to Makanda to pick my beautiful wife. And this place has become home for me. When I sit in Makanda, I just feel as if not going back home. But before I decide to leave this very particular place, we choose to kind of look for people who is from the soil here that will tell us the narrative from the Afro one point of view. And I promise you, I have a very interesting guest who I met literally today. I'm face to face. I must say that face to face today. But we've been talking. And um, when I could hear his Africanacity, for lack of a better word, his Afro one voice. And I'm like, no, there's no way that I, I must capture him before I leave. But before we get into the business of today, he taught me a word before I ask him, before I talk about his name. And that word was very strange. He says, and I'm going to read. He thinks I'm going to say it offhand. Never. My black man <laughs> is going to put me. <laughs> Never. <laughs> it's called Motokimoto Kabatu Le Klom. Mm-hmm. I will pitch it again. You see, he's doing. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. wants me to get it right. My tongue has been twisted. You know, somebody was asking me the other day before I said it again. Somebody was asking me, but Alan, by now you're supposed to be able to speak in Kosa properly. And I said, that's why I married her. <laughs> if she speaks it, I'm fine. <laughs> Bible said two shall become one. So even I don't say it properly as she says it properly, <laughs> I say it properly. So I'm going to repeat it again. Then he's going to help me. Motokimoto Kabatu Le Klompo. Yo, we hit it right, Perek. You got it. You got it. Listen. Now I need to collect the listen, land. Listen, listen. African passport, South Africa is yours. Lesotho and, you know, yeah. all yours. The free state is yours. You, you see, I'm happy. Man, so his name is um, Tumelo and Tladi. He's an hotelian. He's into the hotel business. But before we get there, please, can you explain this motto? Kimoto, uh, Kaba to Le Klumpo. Wow. Where do I start? <laughs> From where it needs to start. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Moto Kimoto Kabatu. Yeah. Um, it was drummed by my grandparents when okay. I was growing up. And my 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 grandfather. But the, the the real person who put it into action was my father. Oh, okay. So what happened to me is a little young boy, I think I was probably seven or six, a friend came over to visit. And I was hungry, I think. Mm. And I just made a sandwich for myself or something that I ate. And dude, my father picked that up. Listen, I got uh, some hiding there and I had to make the friend the sandwich. And my father would say, remember, if that friend didn't come, you're not going to be a friend. You're going to be alone. True. So, But at, what, for your father at six, seven? Yeah. That, uh, that was like, you were still a child or a baby. You know, and that was, that has set resonate with me to my other life. Uh, so I am because you are. That was what it means. I am because you, you are. are. Yes. That's a powerful because one. think about it. If, again, go, let's go back. We're not talking the past. Yeah. If 2020, because there were no people, mm. what happened? Hmm. The world got to a standstill. True, true, true. Because there were no people. Not everybody was. People were like in their holes. So without people, we are nothing. We are nothing. Motuki Motukabatu. You know? Le Clompe. Le Clompo. Le Clompo is respect. Yeah, or Le Clompo means respect. Yeah, Clompo is respect. And it's from which which tribe? Soto. Soto tribe. Yeah. Okay. So it's Soto, mm, mm, Mosoto. Mm. Oh, Soto, Mosoto. Yeah, okay. Mosoto. Okay. You say Mosoto, you know? Mm. Yeah, Soto is the language. But when you refer to me, you say Kemosoto. Kemosoto. Yeah. All right, family. Um, his name is Tumelo Klope. Cladi. Cladi. Yes. Tumelo Cladi. And he's an hotelian. You see, you'll pardon me. This is the beauty about Africa, whereby you get to understand how people talk, how they pronounce their name, and all of that very particular thing. That's why it's called Everyone Show. Currently in Makanda, formerly known as Grimstown. But before we go and we continue, we are currently live at the Black Power Station. And so the Black Power Station, they actually have a particular culture that we have to subscribe to because they are the one hosting us to do this very particular recording in their space. Now, they are, they are, they are what you call rules of engagement as a fact that the guest must carry this book, flip to a particular page. He doesn't need to cram the page and pick a particular line and just read. And so, Mr. Tumelo, the book is in front of you. 
You're going to pick the book, open to a particular page, and just read. Now let's see what you are going to do. <laughs> All right, let's see if I if I know how to read, eh? <laughs> <laughs> well, AI All will right. do the interpretation. Um, when when we endeavor to understand why the European, the foreigner, was called Vazaha, Vazaha, honorable stranger. When we endeavor to understand why the shipwrecked Europeans were welcomed with open arms, why the European, the stranger, is never perceived as the enemy instead of explaining it on mm. the basis of humanity. Mm. Mm. Goodwill, courtesy, the fundamentals of what Caesar calls their old courtesy civilization. We are told it's quite simple because something was written in faithful Wow. Hieroglyphics. Wow. You know, as, as you continue, I'm trying to look at a title from the back there, which is um, Black Skin. Black Skin, White Masks. While you were reading that, what is pondering in your mind around the whole concept of the Europeans and us as the black? Actually, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very hard line, that one, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, I think it questions the question of, and I don't want to talk about colonization. It's okay. Been done. Over and over and over, right? Yeah. yeah Let's talk yeah. about recent. Okay. Uh, recently in China, when COVID happened, yeah, a black person was mistreated. Okay. In China. Okay. And after that, I'm talking about 2020, right? Yeah. Not that's talking the, that 30 years period. ago. Yeah. Talking 2020. That's like four years ago because you're 2024 now. Yeah. <laughs> now, we go to. 2023, mm. uh, January, when the war started in Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, Africans, when they tried to travel to escape, they were stopped in Polish, mm. but the, in Poland. It was a struggle for them to go through, you know, as Africans. With all that, then you go to America. Floyd. Yeah, you know, Floyd is, um, that's the, that's the, they should change American flag to Floyd. Now, <laughs> exactly. I'm you just know, looking for trouble. You know, exactly. I don't think they'll like that. Donald Trump will take you out, bro. <laughs> but also when you come back, we bring it home. Yeah. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about 100 years ago. I'm talking now. Literally four years, yeah. You know, we talk about the Sudan, Northern Sudan, you know. Mm. Sudan, women, children, they have been bombed. They are struggling in their own motherland. Imagine in your own country. You go anywhere in the country, in Africa, white people, like they said, they're not seen as enemies. But with us, I'm seen as an enemy. You're seen where, as an enemy. Where, 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 what happened? Where did this very particular um, enemy to start, if you can help us from your own standpoint? Remember that you're a hotelian and you've traveled. Obviously, we're going to get to how you get into that very particular space. But because I like this conversation now because I don't want to lose the thought. What do you think from your exposure where blacks see each other as, for lack of a better word, foreigners, query, queries, what, what and what. We all know the names that comes. What plays in your mind as what happened? I think Africans were, were quick to take a pill that doesn't belong to us. Okay, now you need to expand that. This is my neck adjusted. Yeah. So what I mean by that is Europeans arrived and when they arrived out of sudden we lost essence of who we are. Okay. Remember before Europeans there was people here. Yeah. That has been lost. We can't go back again. So what I mean by this in the reality of today is that everywhere you go, even us, you can't speak in Aruba yeah. from Nigeria. Yeah. I can't speak in Sut with you. Yeah, true. True. You know what I mean? So sitting here already is the pill that but missed it. We have taken it. So you mean that that pill has affected us in terms of assimilating one another? Yeah. Wow. Because think about it. Think about it. If I would leave today and land in Nigeria, yeah. And I tell you, if I go to the rural Nigeria, yeah. And I said I'm lost, yeah. I need a shelter. 
the door will be open for me. No, will, no definitely. The committee will, will allow me in. Yeah. Yeah. They won't ask me for my passport. They won't mm. ask me who I am. Mm-hmm. Just being me. Amen. Yeah. But the European or the new culture that we are embracing our leaders are embracing it's about me and I and my family. Yeah. 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 You know, it doesn't matter. It's it's, it's just this close. That's close and it's getting worse, you know? It's getting more tighter. So it goes back to what I said about what my father said. Moto. 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 I had to respect my friend who came to see me, to visit me mm. and share the little we had in the house. Yeah. Today, I don't know how of your friends when you're in trouble, how many can you count who would really come out for you to help you out? You know, family, I think when I have to just throw this in, I know he, did, he may not want me to say, but I'll say it. It's okay, it's called Everyone Show. I'm the host. <laughs> I remember, I think, from the culture in which he's saying currently, we were meet, having meetings and stuff, and all of a sudden, literally, I have to say this, the first person to give me a gift of a diary was literally him this year. First! <laughs> and I think I'm saying this because it's that culture that your parent drummer to that, okay, I'm meeting him, and I must, I must leave a print of me in him. The moment I get back to, to my family's home, I actually told my wife the first thing. Like, no, this is the diary that he gave me and stuff and all of that. Because I was just like, okay, that's strange. What's going on here? But before we continue, because of my guests who most of the people watching, they are different divers of different nationality and stuff. When we talk about Tomelo, who is Tomelo? Give us a brief history. And how did you get into the hotelian business? <laughs> it's a very funny story. <laughs> okay. The pill that we talk about. The pill. <laughs> <laughs> you swallowed it then. You know, I swallowed it then. I think I was in standard six. And uh there's something about six with you, ne? Yeah. Your dad, your dad, your dad taught you lesson of six, six. standard six again. You know, that's when everything starts to Do you have six children? You no, know? yeah. Not yet. Not yet. I'm still I'm still I'm still three. I'm still three. So three to go. Yeah, three to go. Maybe. Maybe not. You never know, eh? I okay. might adopt. I don't know. Okay. You, you know, okay. never know, okay. you know. History. So when I was in standard yeah, standard six, yeah. I couldn't understand why. Uh, I watched as a young boy as well. I used to watch Dynasty and all these things, okay. right? So I used to see this glamour, Dallas and all these things. But I couldn't understand why these things that are only on TV, you can't see them in my environment. Okay. And I remember very well, I used to question this, but I couldn't understand. But as I grew up and I, I'm from Ekasi, you know, I'm from Bloom originally, Bloom, which is Bloom yeah, Mangawu, you know, Rockland, Ekasi. It's the township, you know? So I'm from there. It's going deeper. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, and then I went, I was privileged. My privilege, I would say, because my father was a taxi owner yeah. and my mother was a nurse. So, and luckily they had money. They took me when I was in Sunday 6 to a white school. Mm, mm, and then in the mm. white school, I got introduced to hospitality. Okay. But before that, a year before I went there, or I can't remember offered, mm. but I watched a movie called uh, Pretty Woman, Pretty starring Woman. Julia Roberts yeah, and yeah, Richard yeah. Gere. And I was so inf- very fascinated by this guy, mm. the hotel manager. You know, how he made this billionaire yeah. happy, you know, and because the billionaire didn't have a woman, he struggled. So you, you were know? fascinated about the movie you watched. Exactly. And I say, how could this guy control someone who owns everything, happiness, a mere hotel manager, just a simple <laughs> guy. I said, that role is very special because it's something, it's another level of serving. That is, that is strange. I'm trying to process it. So, and that's when I went and I said, this is what I want to do. And then it was introduced at school. Then I did it. Then I went to UJ, you know, it's called UJ now, but my time it was TWR Hotel School. Sorry, oh, okay. I just showed my age now. What generation <laughs> I'm in, sorry. I didn't mean to mention that one. But yeah, so then I, yeah, then I, I traveled. I went overseas. I've got a lot of experience. Then I run my own consulting hospitality business. I'm so you're on, you're on your own business now? Yeah. How how did you transform from the point of, because for me, I, I don't want, there's a particular thing I don't want to lose out from running your hotel. And I mean, from being in the hotel business, obviously we, you work with different people. How did you adopt your mind to be able to capture working with different nationality, race, color, ethnicity? What happened? So like I like I, I, I shared already that Mutuki Mutukabatu. Yeah, but that, that had, was that was suit to environment. Yes. So, but now what happened to me was 
when I came back from the States, I had a chip on my shoulder. Okay. Of what I can do. Okay. You know? Then South Africa will humble you. Career-wise, you move and everything. When you say humble, what does that mean? It means that what you think you can do, the system has a way of becoming an obstacle to that. And you need to find your your rhythm within the system. As a South African? As a South African. That's interesting. Black South African, let me be clear. Okay. Okay. Black South African. So with me, uh, in the industry, I mean, it was never known. Look, in South Africa, uh, lots of people, things have changed now. But during my time, mm, mm, the careers mm. that were there was only a teacher, whatever, and you can become maybe an accountant. They came in, and but not a lot of things were, were available, mm. you know, that would speak to what I want to do. So I do know that the doctor was very popular with my family. Okay. And I used to look at them and say, doctor me, no, yeah. My marks don't agree with the doctor. <laughs> My so mathematics much. teacher, please go out. Then I never came back for that maths class. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so, uh, and then that's how I got. So then I, I met a guy, man. I, I really like, because I went overseas. Okay. It was the best thing that happened to me mm. to get to be a foreigner. Oh yeah. yeah. How's it like? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I must tell you, as much as we, we, Besides the noise, yeah, uh, yeah, American people are very nice people. So I was very supported there. Mm. I got my driver's license there because I didn't want to pay a bribe in South Africa because someone wanted me because he knows that I have a plane ticket, I'm going, and I need this license. To you got a driver's, South African driver's license in America? No, I got an American license. Oh, okay. It's called from DMV, Department of Motor Vehicle. Yeah, 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 yeah. So in South Africa, I wanted to get it at Langlachte. Okay. But there was a guy who saw an opportunity because there was a need. I needed this license before I go overseas. And he said, I must pay him something. Then he'll make it happen. And I refused. South African guy? Yeah. Okay. I, I just have to ask. Yeah, yeah, yeah. South African guy. <laughs> in Langlachte. And I refused. I said, no, I'm not paying anything. No, I'm going to leave without it. And I'll sort it out where I'm going. But I'm a man of faith, you know? Yeah. Like my name says it, Tumelo, you know? Faith, so yeah. I got it there. Mm. It's then that's when I got my license. Then I came back home. And when I came back home, I mean, when I came back in the early 2000, 2000 and, what, 2004, okay. five, came back. And um, because I've been, but at home as well, my parents were very, there's always been people from Zimbabwe selling stuff, uh, Brooms, yeah, yeah, and handmade like street sellers. baskets. Yeah. yeah, my mother used to buy them. There was one I remember called Joyce. My father would let him have sit and eat, and she didn't want to eat. My father said, "You'll have to because you are selling. It's sun. It's hot. Just sit and eat. Then we can still buy and buy. Sometimes we didn't buy. Okay, but humanity, Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that has been always been part of me as mm. well so that's why maybe i never had any issue with anybody okay, okay. so when i went overseas it was cemented so but the real time for me when i became a true african it's when i met delphin Del? delphin delphin okay delphin is a guy from drc okay goma region okay uh he was my baba okay so I, like I told you, I was, I'm, I'm always saying I'm a, I'm a, I'm a privileged experienced black person. Oh yeah. He said it. I think family, when he said that, I love it. He says a privileged black person. Okay. And in experiences, uh, because why I say this is because I was able to travel and get out of the, the bubble, not the bubble, the tiny river, South Africa. Oh, okay. Yeah. The dam, South Africa. Mm. I went to the ocean. Oh, okay. Then you get to see different species. You get to see all these things that are taking place. So Delphin was cutting my hair. He's a foreign guy. I liked him. We were friends. We have a relationship, you know? Okay. Then one day, man, we were talking. I must tell you this. This guy really got me shooking in my boots. All right. So he asked me a very simple question. He used to call me big boss. That's the word he used to say. I used to say, Delphine, please, man, I'm not your big boss. Mm. I'm just an ordinary guy. He says, no, no, no. But then he said to me one day, I don't know how it happened that day, but he just said to me, tell me about my big boss. Mm. Why 
you South Africans are fools. Eh? eh? I'm like, what do you mean? He says, no, man, we are fools. I said, what do you mean? He says, no, let me ask you a question. And I was like, you know, okay, now I'm interested this guy, now. <laughs> this guy I'm wanna, adjusting myself not to sit properly. You know, okay. and, and I said, what do you mean by that? He says, no, who pays your salary? You're a big boss. You drive this beautiful car. I was driving a black a Clio, brand new one, I remember. Clio okay. again, very brand new. And I was in my, I mean, my time then, I was like, yeah, I'm you're shit. The, you're the guy. I'm you're the, the guy. You're, you're, the, the, real, you're the real I'm McCoy. The hotel, yeah. <laughs> and then he asked me this question. And he was like, so who's your boss? Who pays you? So I said, I give him a, a layman's answer. No, I've got, my company pays me there where I work. Yeah. He says, no, 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 no. Who pays you? I says, no, 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 no. It's my manager who approves and everything. He says, yeah. no, who pays you? You, you, you? Whose money is it? Is it your manager's money? I said, no, 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 no. He's hired there. He says, okay. So who's, and I said, no, it's uh, Dr. Platner. He owns uh, a, a fan court, one of the top class. This is your, your baba? State. Yes, okay. my baba. So I said, you know, I mean, George, I'm this guy, you know. And he said to me, okay. He said something that was very interesting. He says, what happens if that guy fires you? What do you mean he fires me? Mm. I I said, my answer was, I'm educated. I've got a diploma, I studied yeah. hospitality. This is my game. What do you mean he's going to fire me? He says, no, no, no. You see, today you can be replaced there. You are just a number. You are not in charge of your life. You are not in control. You are fools, South what Africans. And I said, no, but, <laughs> but you know, I tried and I got upset. First, I was very mad. I cut my hair, I'm going now, you know. <laughs> Obviously, you, you will be like, okay. I offended. And he said, my brother, you must think about it. Then I left. And me. he wasn't bothered about you Listen, living and angry. No, you know, I was very, I was, you know, I was, I was really, you know, and I went home and I said, yeah, I rolled. I said, but this guy, how can he insult me like that? Imagine the first thought was, how can he, he's in my country and now he comes to tell me, wow, 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 fool. Wow, fool and everything. <laughs> and I'm nice, I'm supporting him and everything. But the question was, mm. who is paying, paying you? you? Who's in charge of you? Wow. So I went back and I checked everything I owned. Uh, I had my car, I had uh, uh, my phone, my laptop, all were on contracts, which rely on this salary. Mm. So I realized this guy, but he's asking important questions. So because one of the things he said is, you must remember, if you get dropped there, what are you going to do? Mm, mm, mm. So I then the next day I thought about it. I said, okay, I must go engage this guy. Go so back. you took the privilege to go back again and meet yeah. him? Yeah, I went back. Sorry, Delphine, for swearing. That was my apology. You know? yeah. I'm sorry, man. Um, I think you got me off guard. Um, I want you to explain to me what you meant. I wanted to cry with the answer he said. Wow. He said, he's from DRC where people are fighting. He, there is war there. Mm. He came here. He came here through Malawi. You know, he talked about all of the journeys the, and stuff. What he had to do to get here because he knew what he wanted to do. Mm. The only thing I heard was a clipper mm. in his hands. Mm. 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 And me, I have my relatives here. I have family, I have everything, mm. but I still cannot own my destiny. And I said, what do you mean by this? He said, no, you have all this support. You have everybody. You have family here, but you can't do nothing. You go all the time. And he said it very bad. Eh? <laughs> I, you know, he was so brutal. Was so blunt. And He's like, you go to the white man to help you. If the white man doesn't want to help you, you're doomed. Yes, you can tell me about the ANC, you can tell me, but what do you produce? What do you own? That this is your space, you control. You, you can decide. You know, that hit home. So how did you, how did you manage to adjust yourself and live in his space when he's busy? Now, because you're facing reality with him now. I, how, did, how did you navigate living that space and what decision did you take? I had to go back to myself. Okay. And go back, draw my story backwards. Wow. And when I draw my story backwards, I realize that he is so fucking right. 
he is so so right but this is this is a, this is a story coming from someone like you say is a congolese right yeah a congolese telling you this and yet you were willing to go back to listen to him what was the mind shift that was playing here remember i said letompo letompo means respect yeah but the way he said it from what i'm gathering he called lack of better what he called you a fool Look, that should that should make you literally carry your panga like if you want to even advise me advise me well don't start from it. <laughs> look i think as a person you you need to understand what people are trying to say to you sometimes mm. is not ill meant you might not like the message when people say something to you you mustn't jump quickly to the extreme you need to interrogate you need to ask yourself those questions so i always say i like writing so it's mm. one of those things i write down and i jot and this is what I was pondering mm. so for me to go back is because i wanted to understand what he meant because i didn't know anything i don't want to lie he was right okay. ever since as a, as a child i used to think of myself as a hotel manager not the owner not the owner or even a service provider All right, family. I think we want to take a break here at this very particular point because by the time we come back, I want to interrogate his mindset as to how he navigated around the hotelian business to become this entrepreneur that is sitting here. And this is me saying it. By the time I was looking for business people, um, there's a friend of mine um, who is a family relative to my wife called X. They call him popular X here. If you go on and you put Makanda X, he will pop out. I was saying to him the other day, I was searching for something. I saw his picture. So... And the first person he mentioned literally was this man sitting by my side. And so when we come back from this very particular break, I want to understand how he navigated his mind into the business space. What message does he want to say across Africa? How do we then begin to foster collaboration because you traveled and your ability to get where you are, chances are there may be some certain things around collaborations that you get into. How did you navigate all of that? That's the things we'll be talking on the second segment. Don't go anywhere. You need to share this very particular link. Subscribe, follow. And then before we finish this very particular show, you also now need to begin to follow him. For those of you who are in Grimstown or in South Africa, you might want to join him in his business stuff to be able to navigate how he gets to where he is. We'll be right back just now. Don't go anywhere. Two assignments I want to give you this year. Number one, be deliberate in making friends with people outside of your tribe. For those of you who are afraid of different nationalities, okay, but be deliberate in making friends with Zulu, Kosa, Pedi, Shangani, Swahili. Name those very particular languages you can think of. Be deliberate. And make friends. This is the thing I'm going to say. Make friendship not because you want to investigate and find fault. Because many of us would like making friendship to investigate and find fault. Like, yeah, they said it. Come down. Come down. Come down. The reason why you're even finding people who are causing you pain is because you also are a pain. Let's be honest. I don't know how I got there, but you pardon me. <laughs> You're so a pain. But number one, be deliberate about looking for authentic friends who are outside of your nationality. And number two, do business with someone that is outside of your nationality. Do business. If you're asking what kind of business you want to do, come and meet me. Let's talk. Inbox me on this very particular place. You're watching this very particular stuff. And we'll talk. And for those of you who literally want to travel out of the country to go and do business somewhere, Please, you can hit us up on our website. Just go check our website, afro1.africa, and see all the things in which you can do. And send an email. Let's see how we'll help you facilitate collaborations and partnership with different countries in Africa. All right, family, well, we're back again on the second segment of this very particular show. Um, Tumelo apparently was talking about the whole concept of how this Congo guy. Yeah. Um, what is his name again? Delphin. Delphin. How Delphin decided to deal with him. <laughs> yes, sir. Delphin. Dealt. Yes, sir. He boiled me, eh? You know, he you boiled can also, me. Also, Delphin dealt with you. Yes, and he boiled me. And it was good. So so from, from what Delphin did to you, it literally helped you? Yes, sexually. And, and that's what I like about Mutuke Mutukabatu, ne? Yeah. Diversity. Okay. Okay. And I, and I want to I want to show you this, right? Look, South Africa history tells us that we didn't own anything. Okay. Right? Delphin's history, everything they had to produce because they had nothing. Mm. Mm. For him that comes natural. And there was no better way for him to tell me that 
than to ask me to question my existence. Who's okay. in control of it? How mm. do I think I'm in control of it? When you begin to now internalize or like you like using the word reflect on what he says, what were the aha moment for you to tell yourself that, okay, at this moment, I have to start owning my stuff. I have to make sure that I am not being, like he says, the white man will wake up one morning and fire you. How did you then begin to change your mind to say, I want to own what I want to own? Even with your hotel and business you were doing. So, I had to go back. Okay. Throw back the dots. My experience, what I have, what I can do, and what I did. And that's how I started my business. So, what I did was, I decided to... You don't mind, what's the name of your business? It's Tumerotari Industries. Okay. And it's known as Bojanala. Okay. Bojanala Waitrons. Okay. AKA name. And what, what does the business do? So, we do... Training, culture training for senior managers. Okay. And we also help hotels to be effective with the staff as well. We also provide staff if they need staff for an event, particular event as well. Okay. Uh, but our core business is to change the culture within the company. Okay. You see, okay. when people are having challenges, uh, teams are having challenges. So if somebody will invite you now to Nigeria and to come assist them in the hotel business and stuff, you, you, you're good. I'm the guy to go to. Okay, now that's your camera. That's yeah. how I do my stuff. Oh, yeah. You're going to sell your business yeah. in one minute because it's your business. You yeah. know how to do it. Yes. <laughs> you look at the camera then and you go to sell your business in one minute and talk to Africa. Why they need to call you to come into that country to come and help them solve their hotel business problem from your experience. Well, I remember he said this to me, family. He said he's a soldier. I was shocked. I'm like, okay, hotel surgeon. Not until when he break it down. I'm like, oh, okay, I understand. You don't use terms that belongs to medical for hotel business. I, I get confused. So that's your camera. Sell your seven in the next one minute. Why they need to bring you to their country to come help them, or even in South Africa to come help them with a the hotel business? I think I think I'm one of those people that will help you to authenticate your business. What I mean is use what you have to exploit it, to, to become a guest experience. Mm. And that's what we do. And we work with what you have. Because the most important thing is not what, the guest can sleep in every bed in the world. Mm. But is that Aruba or Lesotho or, you know, mm. that strength of your country you have that we harness. Because what's out there that's been sold, it has nothing that has to do with Mutuki Mutukabatu. True, true. So, and... So you try to help them Africanize their that experience. Business, their experience. And also use what they have. So that's indirectly you trying to use the culture to brand the hotel. Exactly. Do you think that at the moment in Africa, there is a market for that? That's your business. I don't know. <laughs> Look, um, I don't know when last time you slept in a hotel. And then... Literally it's November. <laughs> when did you have in the hotel mm. your favorite dish that your mother made for you? Okay, now you're looking for my trouble. <laughs> you see, long. It's been a long time. Long time. And you travel and you stayed in the hotel. Yeah, I stayed in the hotel. That was literally And November. it's because the hospitality is the way it's set up at the moment, the way it operates on, it has, it has never accommodated the new customer. I mean, in Africa, two billion, we are already there. Yeah, we are. We are the new customer. No, true. We are true. growing more than anybody else. Yeah, that's right. The Americans and China, they are. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. You know, it's not by mistake. No. No. Why is it that on the hotelian business, there's two opportunities, but we are not currently seeing it the way it's supposed to be seen? What's the problem? One of the problems is people who are not in the hotel business are in the hotel business. And people who are in the hotel business are excluded. Now, explain. This is where now, like, some pastors will say, go deeper. So, you find people with resources, right? Okay. Now they need to do something for the wife. They buy a hotel or a guest house. Okay. But they don't know how it works. And then they have this revolving door of problems. Stock being stolen, uh, stuff coming late because they don't understand that business. The ecosystem of it. But they could, then they will go and see someone who's an economist to try to tell them how to manage it. 
But how can an economist come and tell you, or a business analyst who has never worked with? It's like, guess what? It's like, uh, it's, I'm a doctor now, yeah. But I'm a medical practitioner, but now I want to be a heart surgeon. But my practice has only been medical. medical. And tomorrow I want to operate, operate you now, operate and I've never done that. <laughs> That's what's happening. Yeah. That's why you'll see a lot of hotels, they still haven't, and things are really moving fast because the millenniums are demanding. Where's the place of our leaders in, in I use the word in South Africa at the moment, in terms of helping foster in this hotel and business to become lucrative for an average? Because for you, like you said, at six, um, that industry was open to you and you managed to go there. But as a place where the government also needs to play, powered by our leaders, where do you think is the place they need to come in? I think our government is not ready. <laughs> okay. And African leaders are not ready. Now, I'll make a simple example for Please you. Please do. Greece. Okay. Greece was going through turbulent time economically. The only thing that helped Greece with the Euro drama and everything, everything is their tourism business. So you feel that we as Africans have not explored tourism industry properly? Talk about it. Where is the big five in the world? Where, 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 where is the gorillas? Do you see gorillas in the US? No. no. Do you see, come on. Yeah, dude. they're here. In, yeah. This is natural for us. Mm, mm. We know how to track them. Yeah. Our, <laughs> I mean, this is us. Mm. But what's happening is there's this, um, call it a, call it a deliberate okay. structural design that even if you are, I mean, look, I, I've got a small business, yeah, you know, and daily is hard work to make it flow. But I, I see my counterpart, they're doing very well. Not because they're, they're greater than me. Or not I'm tempted to ask you, do you have a black support in your business? It's sad to give you the answer to that one because it might send... The, the the baby mm. in a cot out. And I'll right. tell you this. Okay. Don't, the answer I'll give is what you would expect Mutuki Mutuka about. Yeah. You will not get it from the black community. Some will give you an ear to a certain limit. Okay. But they will never be committed. What is causing their non committal from your experience? It's like... Um, You are, you are in digital space and yeah. this, this is you, mm. right? It's your talent. There's nothing I can do. Okay. I might have an idea, want to try it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's not, it's not mine. It's yours. Yeah. Yeah. So instead of me adding value so that your light becomes brighter, I'd rather find something wrong with your light and delay you. On your journey. I don't know if you get it. I get you. I get you. So get you. it's one thing that keeps... Think about it. If I ask you this question. Okay. 85% when you arrive in my country. Mm. Right? If you have to be honest. Who treated you better? Like that book said. Hmm. The other is... <laughs> And you know what it means. <laughs> Let's leave it like that. You see. Yeah, that is. <laughs> so it's it's one of those things. So, but the, the the scope is there. We have these things, but we still want investment. Um, my president did it. Mm. He went to get big money to invest, but that money when it comes, we don't see it. Besides, I'm sorry, I don't see it. Besides coming in, seeing it, yeah. when it comes, it comes with conditions that I have to not be an African. Let me tell you, when you have a party at home. Okay. In your country. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to tell you, do you need permission from your neighbor to make a party? No. Exactly. Yeah, shame. Oh my God. It, we blocked the entire street. <laughs> and everybody is not jealous, just understands, right? We know that one day you get to my turn. Like yeah. Like turn by turn. <laughs> yeah. So in Africa. Yeah. The investors, if you go, they still don't understand the black client, the hotel industry. In my culture, as a Soto guy, 
I'm talking about December now. Just we from, just passed a few days ago. Yeah, from the 24th, the while the radio we call it wireless. Eh? The mm. radio mm. plays loud till four in the morning, and nobody comes and calls other people. Mm. But that's being you know, and people come join. Some mm. come join. Some they don't come join. Some sleep. Some it's a noise, but they understand. It's mm. a it's a carefree. But now in Africa, because we are becoming modern, as they call it. People are sending cops to your house saying you're making noise. While when we have room giti, it's also known. So to answer the question, yeah. in the hotels, they say after 12 o'clock, you must stop partying. And we know that in South Africa, SAB statistics will tell you, South African breweries, that the big drinkers who are there and they like to party mm. till late. That's, That's where the money is. But the hotel industry is not there yet. It hasn't seen that market. I think before before we continue this, please, there's a thought that I don't want to lose, which is a thought of you getting into the business side. When you find yourself into the business space, what were the challenges that you actually experienced? And how did you navigate those challenges? So one was I couldn't wear my flip-flops and my shorts to get business. <laughs> is, that, is that your challenge? <laughs> yeah. And Gert can okay, wear, that, that, that Gert can, can wear whatever he wants and he'll get the business. Oh, I So see. I had to wear a suit. Oh my gosh. And I have to prove my, you know, for me to get my business going, mm. I had to say to people, no, we'll do a function for you for free to show you what we can do. Remember, I'm from the hotel school. I hear you. So one guy, I'll never forget, one guy in George, he was not talking to us. We were doing an event for him. He needed set up and he was so serious. And I said, guys, let's come in. Let's do this. I got my boys. We did it. We set it up for him. We did it. The work that needs to take about an hour, we did it in 45 minutes. Wow. After we finished, we left. He's like, no, no, no. Please, can you leave some guys? Because our work ethic, mm, mm. you know, we were so highly dedicated mm, and mm. make sure. And that's what happened. So when I dealt with other people, uh, and this guy at the end he was very talking to me. He even he, he gave me a membership to join the business chamber in George. Okay. I'm a member of the business chamber in George. Mm. And from there my business developed. Okay. You know? And I must say, I I I I can count only I wish I could count ten yeah. people who look like me, supporting me. Mm. I can count to ten. But I can tell you, uh, no, I'll be lying if I count to five. But okay, if you were to be, be you been in a business place now for how many years? If you don't mind me asking, uh, it will actively. be actively in the business. It will be fifteen years. Fifteen years, good. That's a, as long as it's more than one five years for me. I'm like, okay, will you advise your fellow black to be in a business? This is not me talking about business space from your experience or your encounter with your Congolese friend. Will you advise? An average black South Africa, black Africa, to enter into business or stay with a nine to five job? I would answer it this way. Okay. Not everybody's an entrepreneur. True. Right? Yeah. But if you know you're good in something, I don't care what degree you have or what, if you have something, mm. put as much effort you would have done it eight to five while you're doing it. But you were at eight to five and yet you moved to own your business. What's packed? I know that, yes, you tell me the story about the Congolese friend of yours and stuff, but now this is you. You are used to eight to five. So when I was doing the eight to five and I saw the gap and I explored the gap. So um, one thing that I can tell you it's no rocket science. Okay. You can see in any hotel if staff are trained and they're not. You don't, you don't need, you don't, you don't need a degree to know what is good service and what is bad service. Mm. So for me, because I was, I'm a special surgeon, you know, in this industry. Yeah. He's back to the surgeon again. You know, <laughs> I, and once I get the treatment, I can tell you right yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah. So for an average South African, I say the talent, you can do it. 
I, for me, I had a drive that I wanted to take control of myself. It's not easy. Don't get me wrong. Okay, good. Listen, you cry, your wife gives you the look. The family gives you the look. You can't attend family things because all your money is spent on the business. Yeah. And you must be able to know that the support you think people will give you, leave the expectation to your dog. You know your dog. So you shouldn't go into the business expecting people from, to from family, friends and stuff? No, you can't because you're going to get hurt. You might quit tomorrow morning. That was fast. <laughs> you might quit tomorrow morning because people are going to say to you, yes, we'll do it, we'll do it. But when it comes, when it matters the most, when they come to roost, <laughs> they will come to roost. So it's important that you yourself must know that nobody owes you anything. Dolphin said that. Nobody owes me anything. I must take control. Yes, my friends got, I mean, the, and some, the sad part about it is you might start early, but your friends might start late and they become more successful than you. Mm. It's just the way it works. Now, do I stop? No. No, I don't. So you have to be able to mentor. It's, it's like um, I've never given a birth to a child, but I do remember my wife having a lot of different moods. Mm. Mm. A business is like that. So for any African out there, listen, wherever you are, you can make money. You just need to pay attention and listen and watch the system and ask yourself a question. Can I do better? What can I do different? And you mustn't do what everybody's doing. Yeah, but sometimes you experience some certain system that is not friendly. How do you navigate those systems? Listen, I don't know if you have never met a father who doesn't like you because you want to date his daughter. <laughs> I've experienced it, so I understand. So you navigated it. Yeah, I've navigated it. So we have so much we can do within you. We toasted through the window. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's so much you can do within you. Yeah, I hear you. And that's been my motto. I can do much with me, what I can do, I can influence. Mm. Whether you help me or you don't help me, I don't have control over that. But my work will speak for itself. Where is your place of, when we talk about the whole issue of collaborations, how is that for you? It's very good. There's a guy that I really love. Okay. His name is Events and Tents. If you want a wedding, if you want, he's in the garden route. Okay. This man has used my business since the beginning till to today. Next week, we are on. Next month, we are on. Mm. We have an event in one of the prestigious events. So you're big on country. collaboration. We are big on collaboration. No, I'm talking about you. As yeah, a person. no, I'm open to that. Motuki yeah. How could oh, you be yeah, asking me true. that? It's true. Remember, it's true. for me to to know this suit is nice, mm. I can look at myself in the mirror and say it until someone just mentions it. I say, it looks good on you, this suit. Mm. Mm. That's why we go shopping. <laughs> what is the thing that is hindering Africans, especially South Africa, from collaborating? I think one of the biggest challenges we experience is self-hate. Okay, can you explain on the self-hate So, part? I'm going to go back. Okay, sir. You are into technology, video, media, on yeah. media, you know. That's your light. Yes, sir. That's your light. The only thing I can do for your light is give it more shine. Mm. So that you could become from Cape Town to Cairo, mm. that light in the media space. Yes, sir. Now, in African context, because I see your light, I start judging me according to your light. Mm. But it's your path. It's not my path. Mm. We yeah. might, we might, like I said, I have a, I have a friend who's very successful in the hospitality industry. Yeah. And he's doing very well. And I'm very proud of him. He's done very well. But that's his side. I've got mine. Does it mean that I don't like him anymore? No. no true. I'm very proud of him. He's done well. And he's busy. So I understand. So until Africans could go back to the basics, whereby when I go to Aruba, where are you from? Yeah, yeah, Aruba. If I go to the rural areas, there won't be expectation on me. I'll be only helped. Just like the book said. Mm, mm, mm. So 
until we young old black south africans and africans sit together and say what do we want 2090 to look like for an african wow that's a longer projection in terms of thinking <laughs> <laughs> because we still not we haven't even started yet. We already think we're just thinking election now. Don't take it to 2090. <laughs> Look, we must remember I use this analogy. I think black communities will tell you okay. even in your country Johnson and Johnson baby powder yeah, is just, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? That was concept in 1918 something. The shareholders of that company they are still enjoying it. Generations beyond the person who came with the with the concept. So are you saying that we Africans have not been able to build a, a business model that can outlive us? Until we realize that if Delphin didn't happen to me, okay, probably I'll be a CEO or general manager. And that's where it ends. And I think that's it. But Delphin, because he came with diversity, with a different thinking, he, he, he pollinated me. He was like a bee pollinating a flower. You know, nature is such a nice thing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. until Africans are prepared to pollinate each other so we can blossom where we are. But you get to hear a statement like, he came to my country and he took my job. Look, um, you must always un understand something. The same person who would say that, he's not saying anything about other immigrants that comes here. Because they don't know they're exposed. There's someone who's interested in me knowing about you being a Zimbabwean or a, there's in someone's interest mm. that I focus on that. Because if I start focusing on other things, other people, it will cost a lot of chaos. So black on black is always okay. If you don't believe me, go to Cape Town. Mm. You mm. can go anywhere in, in the country, you'll see. Black on black is popular. Mm, 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 mm. Even now with Sudan, I mean, these are two generals fighting over at the cost of everybody, but African leaders are there watching. We're not talking history here. We're not talking about Kwame Nkrumah and Sankara. Mm, yeah. No, we're talking about 2022, 20, 2023. Mm. We're talking now. An African Union is there. What is that? Where is it? <laughs> Where is it? Why are we fooling here? Huh? You want to tell me that with our... I mean, think about it this way. Yes, sir. Think about it this way. Why do, you need, why do you need to use your currency in South Africa to be converted mm. into rents, mm. right? Mm. But when you go to Europe, you have the euro. I hear you. Who's benefiting? Them. It's a system. So until Africans can start realizing that we have to start being like bees, pollinating each other. Delphin is from DRC and I've been only to Lesotho. One of my friends, he's a Malawi and he's taking me to Malawi soon mm -hmm. because I said we need to go do something in tourism there Yeah, because he has this Arab land. Can you come to Nigeria and do something in tourism also? Yes, we Let's can. Tell you the know? people to say invite me. <laughs> you know, exactly. Please invite me. Okay. Let's see what we can do with what we have mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. sometimes we, we try so hard to mimic the pill, that it doesn't mm, work. Yeah, I hear you. If you I don't believe you. me, uh, people have been smoking, African people have been, we have Rasta people. Yeah. They smoke Dacha and everything. And the numbers of them dying from Dacha or losing their mind and everything from overdoing it versus the number of children now smoking Nyaupe. Mm. In Africa. Mm. All mm. these drugs. Mm. You, you hear now in, is it Sierra Leone? One of the countries, they are smoking dead people's bones. What the hell? Yeah. Okay, that, that, whoa, okay. <laughs> but it's an African thing that I've been, the pill we swallowed. And our leaders are here. The children in Sudan are dying. The children in DRC are dying for a very long time. Congo has been under fire and everything. But guess what? Four months, Palestinian, Palestinian Jews are fighting, whatever. And exactly. And, and then African leaders are on top of it. They wear the scarf. They wear... Hello. Why are we deceiving? Charity starts at home. Why are we fooling? 
Chad is at home. And where are we? Where, where, where are we? Wow. All right, family, we'll be coming, going back again on another break. And this time we'll be coming on the final segment of the show. You know, I'll do the show three times and stuff. Um, because now the convention is getting heated. He's just moved it to uh, leaders in Africa. Um, my question I'm going to put at you by the time we come back. Do you believe that with what you are seeing that is currently trending across the continent, that we'll get to the point where Africa can become one? And if it's possible, what do you think will make it possible? And if it's not possible, what are the factors that is making it not possible? Family, that's a question I'm going to leave for him as we go on this very particular break. Remember, we are the Black Power Station right here in Makanda. In case if you want to have your events and stuff or you want to come and enjoy the experience here. Like, I, I'm seeing the set here. I'm just I'm just enjoying it. Uh, you can definitely hook us up on the email that is available on the screen and we'll find a way of helping you to get into this very particular space. We'll be right back on the next segment. Don't go anywhere. I'm still with my very good friend, brother, Tomelo, who is an hotelian. God bless you. Number three, if we are to build the Africa we want, we must contribute to collaborations. Not just talk, but contribute. What are you going to bring on the table? For some of you, you have ideas. You know how to make connections. You have friends outside of this very particular place. Call them, negotiate with them, talk, move, do something. Do something. Number four, we must build outside of government involvement which means we must look at our tribe. You know, anytime I mention this point, I get afraid because I know how our selfish leaders are, how they may want to come and fight and attack us. But it's okay. They'll get to a particular point, they'll get tired. There was a time in my country known as Nigeria where Abacha was literally holding the country ransom. It's nowhere to be found. You know your country story, people who are saying that no, no way, it has to be. They know where to be found. So it's okay. But that doesn't mean that we have to stop. At this moment, the only thing that will give us a new narrative is to come up with solutions that are, or strategies that are not governmental involved. The musicians and all the artists you are seeing collaborating and the fashion designer, name them, traveling left, they didn't, they didn't patronize no government to do their collaborations. What makes you think you need the government? By the time the government is seeing that we are collaborating, they will change and join us. <laughs> they will. All right, family, we are back again on the final segment. And this time we are going to be doing all things Africa, all things our leaders. And I'm also to, for us to see if we are literally positioned to be Afro-1. I asked you a question when we went on a break, and I will need to pick it from that place. Do you think that from all that you have seen thus far, we are ready to become a one Africa? And if not... What needs to happen? Uh, Darlington, you hit me with a fist in the mouth and the face. Boom. <laughs> it's not my fault. It's called everyone. Just, that question is very, it's very emotional and provoking. Yeah, but it's everyone's show. You saw it. <laughs> you hmm. know, if I get you right, yes, your sir? question is saying to me, what's, that, what's happening in the millennium century, the first century, 21st century, Will we ever get to a stage where Africa become one? It's possible. It's already started. Help me with the science. Um, I met a guy called Darlington. Okay. And I didn't need you to show me your qualifications or whatever. I started seeing you as a human. With your talent. Yeah. And we end up sitting and having a conversation. Okay. It had nothing to do with your money, your status, your family, mm. or are you with the guys from uh, the ones in Nigeria that are killing people for oil and, mm. you know, that rough. The Niger Delta. The Delta, you know, <laughs> there's nothing to do with that. I'm sitting with my brother and having a conversation that we don't have a space in Africa to talk about. True, true, true. So the current leadership in Africa has already written its, they already written their history. I'm not going far. I'm not talking, please hear me out. Yes. I'm not talking 
30 years ago. I'm talking about 2020. Mm. Uh, I'm going to talk about South Africa. The corruption that took place in 2020 in South Africa with the PPE story. Yeah, the, oh sh- yeah, I remember. Right? I remember yeah. This is when people are, can you imagine you are, you know, you need an oxygen mask mm. to breathe in the machine and someone decides to just steal the pipe of the machine. And you wonder why we have a lot of graves. So, then you ask yourself again, another question is, as talented as you are, my government says when you are a youth, I must give you 350. You must do minimal labor job. Okay. But I remember very well when I was growing up, this is me. Yeah. I was told that before I get pocket money to travel with a school trip, I must make sure that the yard is clean and the chickens' dens are fed, the dogs' things are fed. On weekend, I do the yard. I really work for money. Yeah. Work for money, Mm. not receive money. Mm. I hear you. I hear you. Not receive money. So now, what African leaders are busy doing are letting us be busy with they're taking the motor skills away. Okay. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Yes, sir. Uh, The social media has came exploded. But people are sitting on the couches. People are no longer active. People are no longer, I don't know if you lost your phone. Do you see what happened to you? No, no I, I will panic and stuff. And I think there was a time I lost, not even lost my phone. Do you see? There was a time where. So right there. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. That's the new colonization. Mm. I don't know if you have a little one. My children have one hour cell phone. Okay. My son, when you take that phone away, he becomes a monster. Facebook is being sued overseas for the way they do Instagram and how it is hurtful to children because children can differentiate. Mm, mm. Now, if you want to really destroy a country, you don't go for the old people. You go at the young ones. You mess them up. You mess them up so that when they become adults, it is that... So it's game over. It's game over. So that's the problem with citrus. How it's going to change is when people from different walks of life, Mm. doesn't matter if I go to um, Ghana or if I go to Lilongwe or if I I go to um, Morombe in Zimbabwe or if I go to Mozambique or I go to Tanzania, Accra, whatever, Mm. wherever I go in Africa. Yeah. Right? I may be to pollinate Africa. I remember. I remember you said Then it will blossom. And we mustn't, re- mustn't forget, it's not about the short term. Long term. Like, like you said, 2090. Yeah. 2090. <laughs> I remember 2090. You, imagine this, ne? Yes, sir. Imagine you wake up, ne? You feel like going to Nigeria, right? Mm. Or you feel like going to Cape Verde. Right there at the top of Africa. Yeah, yeah. You go there. When you get there, you feel at home. You feel you being there as an African. That's what matters. As you're saying that, what is coming to my head now is this visa issues that has separated us. What do you want to say about it? Because this is, it's everyone's show. And yet we have this very particular board that's called a visa that separates. For example, if you want to go to Nigeria, you need a visa. Can't just rock up and say, because I'm in Africa, let me just go. What do you want to say regarding that very particular video issues? Do you believe that our borders, because yes, everyone, like you said, we can become one. We have still have these visa issues. We still have the borders that are still restricting. For example, we didn't, I think my wife was showing me the map of South Africa and all of a sudden how Lesotho was 
in it. I'm like, it does not make sense. It's like having, it's like saying Gremstown, it's a, it's a country on its own, but if you want to come to Gremstown from that side, you produce Visa. What's your thought and opinion around that very particular narratives? It's one of the things that we can take off a shekel. When you mean take off, how? How, why did the concept of visa happen? Okay, I'm listening. Why? Why should we accept the visa? While we know that, listen, yes, sir. in your culture, you can't talk to your father the way you want. Mm. In my culture, I can't talk the way I want to my father. <laughs> you'll be, but you'll, you'll be, we are far apart. Yeah. But we have commonalities. True. So, the visa, it must be dismantled. But African Union can't even do it. But what is the use of African Union? Help me. It's and do you think that they are playing their game properly why that union was orchestrated? Look, ne? Let's start from here. All right. I'm an African. Yes, sir. I'm very not Tabun Beg. He said it. And that had to be killed so quickly because that was a danger. That's the reason why he was removed. It's part. Okay. And if you don't believe me, the corruption that happens, which banks did they do? It? Did uh what's that Afri Bank? The Afri Bank, yeah. Did it move the money from Africa? It's multinationals. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. So Mbeki said, I'm an African. I'm born of the soil. You know, and it's that thinking that we really need that has died. I hear you. I mean, I know. Obasanjo used to play here. No, he play, not, not he used to, he still plays. It's just the fact that he doesn't come in known as in for, for the media to be honest. He way, used to come like a taxi, bruh. Yeah. The yeah I used to love up. Nigeria. We used to be Nigeria. We have the guy, Omoto, one Omoto of the show. Nigerian guys. Yeah, Omoto show. He used to do shows. There were no xenophobia. Mm, mm, mm. But someone saw the danger and says, listen, this, this cozy collaboration needs to end. So, to answer your question, Africa can lip. We have the scientists, we have everything. But we have the wrong leaders. So our leaders are problems. The, our leaders are still trying to solve the problems of the colonization in the 21st century. Let me Say let me it break again. it. Let me break it to you again. <laughs> okay. Our leaders are still trying to solve the problems of colonization in the 21st century. You yeah, hear? I did say it too. Before you come and attack me, because you guys are very quick to come for me. She said it. So what I mean by that is, let me ask you a simple question. Yes, sir. With your talent where you are in your profession. Yeah. Why aren't you having, and I must be corrected because Nigeria is up there. Yeah. They have this movie thing they do, mm, Nollywood. Mm, mm, mm. And we're number two in the world. Yeah. Nollywood, right? Yes. So what's stopping Seneca? Do you want to tell me there's no talented people in Seneca to do that? There is. The bee pollination, where is it? Mm -hmm. African mm -hmm. leaders can tell you what they're going to do. You'll wait till you turn into the grave, still waiting. I, I, is it not because there's this Western influence that is still playing on the African leaders' head and that's why they're not doing anything or they just choose to just focus on their pockets and neglect everybody? Unfortunately, they've been... I don't know how to call it, but I call it starved revenge starved revenge yeah okay because i have fought for you as an african person i've fought the powers at being i fought apartheid for example South Africa. yeah okay i fought everything now it's my revenge on you 
to take the master's place and treat you worse than the master. And at the same time say to you, we care, let's help you. And then while we're doing it, we look at you and smile with you. But behind the scene, we've already... But, I mean, let, let's, let's ask this question. Yes, sir. China. Okay. Do you think Chinese, when they are busy investing in Africa, it's whose interest? Their interest. They need the resources because their population is growing as well. Yeah, yeah. They need the resources and they need to position themselves. They mm. will bring the money. True. And all, all you need to do, you just buy certain individuals and you see what happens. I mean, so our leaders indirectly are Bibles against our own narratives. No, I think our leaders are on revenge. It's time for them to eat because they have paid the price. But they're not saying, they're not saying, when are we doing a spaceship coming from Africa to bring African spaceship? Where is it? That tells the African narrative of the space. I know it from the Europeans. Mm. NASA, that's the only place where you get the information about space. Mm. Mm. And there's nothing about us as Africa where we have our spaceship. That's the question I'm asking you. The leaders are here. But they want to tell you they want to give you land, they're going to give you grants, they're going to give you all these things. But those things are not material for now. What I want as a small business is support, a good ecosystem where my business flourish based on my merit, my hard work, not see someone because of the political connection flourish more than you, mm. but doesn't even know how to switch on the camera. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you have ever bidded for a job mm. and you know you are the best candidate for it. And yet you see the person that you are reporting to on saying Sato, you're like, how did you get here? And, and the sad part about us Africans is we, we also teach. Yeah. We are teachers. Yeah. yeah. So the question to answer again is Africa can do it. But the, our only hope is the, is the Facebook digital natives kids who will save us. Because still today, you're still dealing with the same thing that your father was dealing with. I hear you. And it's in Africa. Now there's no white man. Why are we possible. still struggling? Let, let's be honest with each other. Tell me which white president is in Africa. None. So why are we having the same problems that your grandfather dealt with? Let, let, let me show you this. In Nigeria, there was, there was a story. Now listen, tell me this. In Nigeria, there was a story about police force that killed people. Yeah, um, NSAS. Those, those, they call yeah, them SAS right? in Nigeria. Yeah. What color are they? Blacks. Um, what's the difference between them and the people who are missionaries? Mm. African leaders, none. South African leader, I never heard talking about that situation. Because it's, it's, it's similar. It's a similar problem that they have orchestrated themselves. And so if I point you, tomorrow you will point me back. And like you say, how do you put it? Um, something around to do with revenge. <laughs> revenge. Revenge. <laughs> revenge. You know, because people are not ready, man. I hear you. I and hear you. until we mature, look, let me tell you, I would like to live till 2200, 22. I would love that, but mm -hmm. it's not going to happen I hear in you. my lifetime. I hear you. But while I'm here, it's my honor to take and make sure an African Enjoy Africa. Be part of that solution. As we begin to bring our thought to a close because of my time that I have left. And stuff, yeah. What legacy do you want to leave first as a personal and second on your business within the hotelian space and the tourism space? I think hotel and tourism, is it the same thing? It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Okay. Yeah. You can't blame me. You are the soldier. I'm not a soldier. No. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a media. <laughs> so tourism deals with the transport and other stakeholders together. Okay. We all claim together. Okay. Yeah. So what legacy do you want to leave personally and also on your business side? So it's two legacies I want to get from you. What would that be? Well, my legacy would be to see... And as you're saying, it's recorded though. Yeah. Let me say like Nigeria, the thing they recorded. Okay. And we'll hold you accountable. No, that's, that's nice. Good. You see that part... That's what makes things happen. Now, that's what I'm saying. That's what we're that recording. That's on the mic. So that I can look at it and see it 30 years from now. Yeah. That this is what I said. What the heck? Exactly. You know? So that's but I'll be choose very your clear. response. <laughs> I'll be very clear. Yeah. The legacy that I would like to leave is that 
people where they are, they must use what they have to better themselves. Okay. In people simple words, are, use what you have. In simple words, yourself. okay. If in your yard you are growing millis, work on that millis to okay. be more, so you can it can sustain you. Mm. If you are talented as a musician, work on that music music so that it creates a big studio for yourself. Okay. If you are good in management skills, plow back. Mm. You know, mm. and that's one of the things. And 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 it can be done. Yeah. Let me tell you, I'm not a millionaire. Let's get this right. Okay. With the talent I have, I was able to assist the national. Department of Art and Art Culture, Culture yeah. in Grahamstown for National Art Festival to train matured gogos with big houses the children have left, but they have a beautiful room to accommodate someone. I used the resources I had. Mm. I showed them how to set up the beds because I worked in the hotels. Yeah, yeah. I used to run housekeeping yeah, departments. Yeah, yeah, I showed them yeah. why it's important to pack those. That's one of the legacy I want to, to say. Yeah. People must use what they have. The Googles didn't have to go put a five-star hotel in the in the township. Mm. They mm. used what they had. If somebody will meet you as Tumelo on the road, what would be that print you want to leave with them? I am because you are, man. I am because you are. Because if I, 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 I'm a bee pollinating you so that you can Blossom. flourish. Yeah. That's what I want you to see. And that's what I would like to see. In my business, I would like to see unemployment being dealt with. But by the people who are themselves are unemployed. Because no one is going to solve me. No one is going to rescue you. Yeah, you have to rescue. True, you have to rescue. Listen, people. there is no amount of investment is going to hire you. So, but you get a government saying that they are creating what you call creating jobs. Look, ne, you mustn't be fooled by the words. But they are going to come during election. Listen, they, they've been doing this for the past so many years in Africa. Years, going to now, we are a new democracy, right? Yeah. African states are still dealing with the same problems. The same promises that were given to them during Kuruma's time. Yeah. They're still dealing with them today. Wow. So politicians are not there for us. They are there to cover their part and make sure it works. If you don't believe me, tell me tell me a politician you really know that except for Robert Mugabe. Okay. Right? That went all out. All out to make sure that his people in their country as a citizen. I don't know if you have seen an American mm -hmm. when you engage them. Mm. An American will tell you right in your face that, listen, what? You have Cape Town. You have Victoria Falls. You have this. You have what? No, it cannot come to America. We are the best in the world. Mm. With our, listen, with their drug problems. Just to tell you. Listen, the way they do it, and in such subtle that when you have an American passport, people light up. Mm. I don't know if you've been in a, you know, in transit. No, no. And then, passport is the beginning of wisdom. That's what I say. Yeah. And then people start. <laughs> you just see like, okay, whoa, okay. American, they, they will just pass. Where are you traveling to? Mm. What are you doing here? You got a visa, motherfucker. I've got the visa here. Yeah, yeah. Here's the visa. Yeah. I've been appointed. So why are you and asking? And they insult you. Yeah, they, they interrogate you. Yeah. Especially in Munich. Yeah. You really feel. Because they ask you, where is your passport? Where yeah. is this? You're sitting there in trans. Then you see an American speaking and... And they're just going like... Nothing happens. Hence I say, until Africans make Africa great for Africans, without our leaders. That's the statement. Without our leaders. Without our leaders. We have to navigate this. And it has been done before. So, with those words, I'm saying, Darlington... Let's be bees. And let's pollinate. Let's pollinate. Can you imagine if we have thousands and thousands of people that are really caring about, I mean, there's a story about fishery problems mm. with the fishes and everything. 
African leaders are busy saying, let's cut the permits to know you cannot take 10, 30. But they know that we have big families, mm. right? Mm. But a big ship comes and grabs the fish at the lake, whatever. And take it to... To Europe. And yet we are doing, we are rationalizing. It's like taking our resources that side and come back and you bring it to us on a premium price. Exactly. How dumb can we be? <laughs> and we are... You said it too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I must accept. I, I, I mean, it's like, and one of the things that I, I like I say to you again, there are two brands that I, I haven't owned yeah. yet that I need to own. It's Batu, okay. the shoe, and Drip. Oh yeah, Batu and Drip, yeah. yeah. And I saw Litabo Jean. Mm. And, and I, the reason I want to own these brands is because it's us. It's someone from my township. Yeah. I know that guy that he's got a Urahadi who's got anybody. So mm. those are my dream that when I have that power, I want to buy my family all those things and have them there and then say, when we go out, this is what we use. This is us we use because that's how it's going to start. I want to pollinate that business. I hear you. I hear you. You see. Well, because of our time, how can people find you and um, also What's your final word to us as Africa? You have two minutes to do that. <laughs> well, I'm on LinkedIn. Okay. Uh, you just look for Tumelo Tladi. No, you talk, talk, come on. Yeah. So they know. I'm on LinkedIn. You just Tumelo Tladi. If you are having a problem with your team, absenteeism, uh, you're having challenges with the business strategy, hospitality, or the team itself, doesn't matter what industry it is because mm. we are all humans. Mm. We are, have same needs. Mm. So we are people we can talk to. Talk to us. Okay. We can help you, you know. Tumelo Tladi on... Yeah, Tumelo Tladi on LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Okay. Yes. All right. And your final words to mm. us as Africans? My final word is, let's do it, guys. We've been, we, we waited too long to be free. We are free now. So why are we still talking about it? Let's get it done. Let's do it. We waited too long to be free. And now we are free. Like he says, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Thank Kill you it. so much for hosting us at the Black Power Station. And they're making sure that at least the narrative of Afro One continues even from here in Makanda, Eastern Cape. Yeah, yes. Eastern Cape. I just have to remember Eastern Cape. But I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy yourself on this very particular Afro One show. Thank you very much. And I also want to ask you, please, we are celebrating the 50th birthday of Arts National Festival. Yeah, you said so. I would like to see Africa show stand being available Afro in the show. Township. Now, we'll, we'll, we'll do you that. know? So it's recorded, right? Remember? <laughs> So it's taking place. <laughs> it's putting me on the hot spot. Yeah, I don't, like, I, I don't like you. I want to use your own words. So it's recorded. So by by Ju June, it's starting June, yeah. the last week of June. You know, as you say, the last week, Ghana must go. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Ghana must go. So you really, really make sure ah, okay. that you come through. No, we'll, we'll, we'll invite come through. you. We'll come through. We'll invite we'll you, through. definitely. Yeah. And yeah, thank I, you I, very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. My man, my man. You are the main player. Why is it like that? Can yeah. you do it the way we like it? How do we how do we do it? Okay, let's see. Yeah, that's how we do it. Okay, oh, that's okay. That's that's how that's how you people do it. I've just learned another one again. Yeah. And sharp, sharp. It. And that's how we come to the end of the Africa One show. Thank you so much for joining us on this very particular time. We look forward to the next episode. I promise you is going to be all things Africa. And if you have any comments you want to say or you have any opinion you want to add to this very particular show, please use the email. That is currently available on the screen. I remain your Afropolitan Apostle, Darlington Steve. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now and God bless you. With that being said, I want to make a call. I'm looking for like-minded people who believe that they can work with me and my team. And for some of you, literally, you may not be here physical, but you can choose to collaborate with us either adversary level, connection level, even monetary level, because hear me, we are currently now with a team, we're putting up some certain, um, what you call, events and shows we want to do that will involve traveling 
And that will also cost us money in terms of paying the staff, um, hotel accommodations and all of this very particular thing. If you're a government agency or maybe you're a private parastatus or a private business, you own something that you feel that you want to use as your own way of supporting this very particular narrative. You may not be sitting on the camera like my kind, but your money, your intelligence, your, your, your wisdom, your advice can help us and can channel us. I need advisors. I'll be very honest. I need advisors for me. The Bible says the multitude of counsel is there is safety. So I need a lot of counsel to be able to guide me. I'm calling that I need partnership. I need you to join me to collaborate and to build this very particular Afro one. You may be a graphic designer, a videography, whatever that you are doing. Come, let's work together. Let's work together. With this being said, I so much appreciate you for taking out the time to listen to me today or to watch me. And I believe that this is not the last time I'm going to be seeing you. This year, literally expect a lot of Expect mind-blowing shows, expect conversations that are going to be thought-provoking, and expect some certain narratives we are going to be deliberately doing with government officials and business and people. We are pushing ourselves literally into the water. And that's why we need you to collaborate so that when our feet get to the water, we can guarantee that your boat is by the side to pick us up. I want to say thank you. This is a brand new year. And I believe that we all have something that we're trying to pursue this year. My prayer for you is all of your expectation. May this year be the year that you will get an answer to it in the name of Jesus. I thank you for allowing me to be in your home. Thank you for watching me on your phones or whatever device you're using to watch me right now. I appreciate you. But above all, as I begin to bring this very particular thought to a close, please, if this country will change, if your life will change and my life will change, we have to be responsible enough to say it is not up to them. It is up to me. It is not up to the government. It is up to me. With that being said, thank you. God bless you. I will see you on the subsequent production of the Afro One Show that is powered by Afro One Network. I want to use this time to thank our media partner, person of luminant films i really appreciate you guys for standing with us and supporting us to make sure that this very particular product is going for those of you who want to do your podcast i want to engage you please visit luminant films and for you to just talk to them they partnered with me and this is what we're doing i'll see you on the flip side bye and thank you <laughs>